They're the much-loved faces of Madagascar. Father, mother, and son. Amazing. Their jungle homes now under pressure as we crave a flavour. Vanilla. On this Indian Ocean island, it's vanilla bean boom time, and everyone wants their slice. Vanilla is the best. No income better than vanilla in Madagascar, and I think in the world. There's a killing to be made. A 50-fold increase in price. Yeah, you can understand there is vanilla and vanilla. Tonight, we take a wild journey through Madagascar to discover there's nothing bland about vanilla. In the vanilla capital of the world, it's party time. In this bar in the North Madagascar town of Sambava, tonight's draw card is a young local singer, Prisco a la Pare. Prisco's music celebrates the business that's transforming one of the poorest places on earth the white hot vanilla trade. In the crowd are some of the people riding the vanilla boom, like sought after local tour guide, Yokno. And tables full of vanilla hustlers. They're middlemen who trade the crop in the streets of Sambava. They call themselves Us Koba. This song's about them. In a nation where jobs are scarce and work often backbreaking, these are good times for the vanilla hustlers of Madagascar. Strong demand and short supply has sent prices through the roof. Just a few years ago, one kilogram of processed vanilla was worth $80. Now it's $800. That's more expensive than silver. A savvy hustler can make a fortune just by taking a cut of each deal, a vanilla slice. Yokno, the tour guide, is showing me around Vanilla City. There's so much at stake here, our attention makes some of the traders nervous. So we wanted to talk to some middlemen, people who buy the vanilla and sell it to others further along the chain, but uh, we've been told that we can't talk to these dealers on the street, we have to talk to a spokesman for the association. So we're just trying to do that now. Permission granted. Can you show us the vanilla that he's trading? Catch. Right now catch. there is no none of the best quality. Right. But he's just showing us the catch. Right. So that's catch. The, the lowest quality of the vanilla is called catch. Catch. Yeah. Catch. But I mean it's it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty good. Wow. That's better. Yeah. You can tell it's better. The problem it's long. is, yeah, it's not yet, not yet dry enough. Right. It's still shimmy though. So yeah. you also need to, to do another process.
everyone wants a piece of the action, even the hottest singer in town. For Prisco, it's pretty much the only way to make his music dreams possible. There aren't many ways to make a decent living in Madagascar. People do anything they can to get by. They wash old jars and bottles to sell, they pull huge loads by hand, and whole families sleep on the street. But the vanilla boom means that finally some serious cash is being earned and spent. It's crazy busy. Is it always like this? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, exactly because the vanilla people have lots of money and they buy more tuk-tuk and they buy more taxi booths and then they were working on it. It's amazing. Like, it feels like market day, but this is every day. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always, it's always like a market day. <laughs> One thing you notice walking up Vanilla Street is that there's a lot of flash motorbikes that look pretty new. I think that's what people are spending their middleman money on. It seems to me that the street hustlers, they are not saving their money, they are spending it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're like spending it now because uh, they don't uh, really know how to save money and then how to keep it. So if they got money, so they uh, directly want to buy whatever they want. The next rung on the vanilla ladder means not having to hustle on the streets. Your customers come to you. And that's how it works for the owner of this vanilla mansion. This is the home of big time middleman, Tony. He grew up on this street. Now, he towers above it. So Tony, from here, can you, can you see how Sambaba has changed because of vanilla? <laughs> All right, yes, uh, it's, he said that it's a very, very big change in the level of the town. I mean, when the vanilla was the low price, the, the building there was not yet there. Mm. So all of the building, like high, that we saw right now is because of vanilla. Right. Mm. And they're all people like you, like uh, middlemen, traders, who, who are making the money? Uh -huh. from Dresden, no, no money. Uh, so from Dresden, let's see. It depends on your behaviour, mm. depends on your skill, how to work mm. and how to manage your money. With an appetite for life and for business, Tony's street hustling days are over. And these days, it's the help who take care of his prized possessions. We're heading into the hills outside Sambava to get to the source of all this vanilla. Desperately poor, rough-hewn huts with no mains electricity, running water or sewerage, but incredibly beautiful. Here in Madagascar's hinterland, the bean is everywhere. Even at roadside cafes, hustlers are looking to offload their latest trade. It's, it's, it feels oily. Yoknos invited us to his village to meet some vanilla farmers. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. My dad. Hello. He hasn't been home for a while. And he's very pleased to see his two-year-old daughter. My Luta! So she is my little Hannah. Bonjour, Hannah. Ça va? Oh, my God, bonjour, Papa. 
Life in this river village is slow. Yokno's relatives make money selling lychees to bus passengers for a few cents a time. Today is a bigger day than most. There's a wedding in a neighbouring village. Yokno's a striver. He's hustled vanilla and driven taxis in Sambava, and his command of French and English means he's in demand to lead tourists into the nearby national park, Marojeje. Uh... It's allowed him to build his own home, but it's hard to be away from his family. Because my work is dependent on the travelling, yeah. I have to go. And then, yeah, I go to Marojeje, for example. But uh, when I go to Marojeje, which is for tourists, maximum four or five days. Right. Yokno is being pulled back to the village by family and by vanilla. I'm, I say I, I'm jealous, you know, because uh, everyone here planting vanilla and they know in Sava region is vanilla is the, the, the crazy money, you know. And then why not? I'm from the village, so I have to move back here. You have land? You can yes. plant vanilla? Yes, I have land. Uh, I mean, it's not my, my own land, but my parents gave it to me. Yeah. Yeah, because right now I couldn't buy land yet, but I have it now. Yeah. Let's go and have a look at your field. Yes. Of course, we can do. We can, I will show it to you. Thanks. Growing vanilla is a blend of hard graft and the lightest of touches. This is vanilla vine. But we cut it this, and then we'll make it a roll, which is uh, to make easy like a transport system. So you can replant a vine? Yes. Once it's cut. For a vanilla orchid to transform into a bean, it must be pollinated by hand. You need to sharpen it. With... Each flower is ready for pollination for just a few hours each year. And for this orchid, today is the day. So how to do it as well? So this is orange form. We use this because the orange form is more soft. So it doesn't scratch either part of the flower. So the way to do it, the flower of the vanilla, there is uh, a cover. This is called belly. So we push the belly down. So now we can see the real flower. Right. But for the vanilla flower, there is a male here, up here, and the female is down here. Yeah. You know? But there is the tongue which is avoid the contact from the male to the female. That's why it has to be a hand pollinating, hand being. The vanilla orchid originally comes from Mexico, where it's pollinated by a native bee. The green one is the vanilla pod. Yeah. You know? The farmer's but technique was invented by a 12-year-old slave boy, Edmund Albius, in the 1840s, and is still being used today. But the goal is the male will have a contact with a female, but right now he cannot because it's avoided by this tongue. So what I do is I push this tongue up and then I press softly the male to the female. So now it's done. With this flower, you only have one day to do it, right? Only one, hand, only one day. Only today? Only one day and only today. And the best way to pollinate is, is uh, morning before uh, 12 o'clock. After 12 o'clock, the flowers start to be uh, sad, huh? which is not really good. Yeah, not as sad as the farmer who doesn't pollinate it, though, in time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll take four years for Yokno's vanilla vines to start producing pods. When they're ready, he'll want to skip the hustlers and sell directly to a place like this. Yeah. 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 
It smells amazing. It smells like vanilla. Yeah, <laughs> it's really amazing. Is. <laughs> Now you are in the warehouse, second step, and uh, we are now measuring the vanilla. Johan Lejeu works alongside Daniel Goltran, who owns this export business with his wife, the third generation of her family to grow vanilla. It's a big, lucrative operation, driven by the appetite for natural vanilla in everything from ice creams to perfume. The story of the vanilla from this last year is uh, amazing because the price from the green vanilla increased uh, from $1 to $50. So you can imagine. A 50-fold increase in price. Yeah. So what is this worth, do you think? The cost price is around uh, $200, uh, $150. $150. Yes. US dollars? Yes. Amazing. It looks smaller for a start. I show Johan a bunch of vanilla I bought earlier from a street hustler. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can understand there is vanilla and vanilla. Uh, it's absolutely not the same. This vanilla is just from, looks like a green vanilla, a green beans, but it's not dry. If you want to get a good products, this takes around uh, four, five, six months preparing, preparation. This is only one week. They just put in the water to get the brown color and then dry it for two days under the sun. And that's it. This needs around three months of drying. There's a lot of vanilla in this warehouse, which provides lots of employment to people in the area. Measuring, counting, and packing. Even though it might look like they've had a bumper crop, the harvest was poor this year. Climate is changing and we have difficulties to have a lot of vanilla like before. Demand for good vanilla keeps growing, which is driving the prices up for everyone, from exporter to the consumer. Daniel, this is all good for business, right? The high prices are terrific for you. C'est pas bien parce que nous, en fait, on travaille avec notre argent. Donc, au lieu de grandir, comme les prix augmentent chaque année, on fait chaque année toujours les mêmes quantités, en fait. Il faut toujours plus d'argent pour faire toujours les mêmes quantités, quasiment. C'est un peu un coup de poker. On, on investit, on achète, et on ne sait pas combien combien voudra la vanille. Even so, times are good, and they can see the benefits for local people. On a vu des paysans qui sont achetés des panneaux solaires, des voitures, des construire des maisons en dur, euh, toutes ces choses là qu'ils auraient jamais fait si les prix n'avaient pas augmenté en fait. Yeah, people here can win the salary of their own life in one year. Most of all the farmers are like that. Yeah, yeah. In one year, they bought for 50, 50 years of working. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money at stake for this business. The workers are under constant surveillance throughout the day. When it's time to pack up, there's a roll call. And every worker is checked to make sure they haven't pocketed any beans. With each vine holding up to a kilogram of vanilla pods, crime can pay handsomely. And theft is a big problem. <laughs> Police stations are often few and far between, so villagers organise their own protection with roadblocks like this. For three months before harvest, farmers will take turns to sleep with the crop. But even so, it might not be enough. Sometimes the consequences can be fatal. Over the last year or so, farmers have killed vanilla thieves trying to steal their harvest. Have people stolen from these crops? Uh, yes, yes. People put so much time and effort into it and, mm -hmm. and so much of their own energy and money mm -hmm. that when they catch a thief, there must be 
Big uh, anger. Uh, yeah, very, very, very angry. Yeah. They, it has to be like two ways. Maybe they will send it to the, the police or gendarme and then bring him to in jail directly. Otherwise, uh, the people, the owner of the vanilla, getting aggressive with the theft, mm. which means they can do a crazy thing to them. Theft is such an issue, farmers often pick their crop early to beat the thieves, before the vanilla has matured. It means a lot of the vanilla that hits the market isn't export quality. Another reason why prices of the best beans are soaring. To try and ensure quality and supply, some of the world's largest producers of flavours and fragrance are getting involved. Approve uh, all the members and the workers from multinational manufacturer Simrise are trying to convince farmers not to harvest too early. We give them uh, some funds to allow them to to organize themselves, all the men uh, in the villages, to do some uh, some round during the night, so the farmer they don't need to stay all along the night in their plot. And it decreased the theft, actually. We have good results, like this year. They, uh, most of, the quality will be good this year because m most of uh, the, the farmers uh, wait for the, the, the full maturity of the vanilla before harvesting it. This farmer's crop has been robbed four times. Is it worth it, René? All this trouble, sleeping with your crops, guarding it from thieves? Is it, is it, would it not be easier to grow, I don't know, pineapples? Yeah, well, I'm risk for my bull. Yeah, and I come to visit the commission of Pangaltra. When I was a little bit of a poison, I take the river man and my hang for it. In this country where so many people live hand to mouth, even the steepest hills are cultivated for rice, bananas, lychees, and increasingly for vanilla. This is putting immense pressure on the remaining forest, which in turn is threatening the survival of much of Madagascar's critically endangered wildlife. There are still some untouched parts of Madagascar, but you have to make a real effort to go and see them, which is why we're taking a two-day trek up there into the Marajeje National Park, where hopefully we'll see one of the other things that Madagascar is most famous for, apart from vanilla, and that's the lemur. About 90% of Madagascar's reptiles, plants and mammals exist nowhere else on Earth. Much of that biodiversity is at risk. Lemurs are among the most endangered primate group in the world, largely due to habitat loss. I came up 700 metres over five hours, about 12 kilometres. It's extremely beautiful here, but after that, I really hope we find some lemurs. Well, the climb has paid off. A family of lemurs came through our camp at five o'clock this morning when we were asleep and we sent a guide down to follow them and we're down here about 500 metres away and there's a family of three lemurs in the tree just up there I can see two of them now father, mother and the son amazing it's made the climb worth it
we're looking at silky safakas. They're one of the rarest mammals in the world. There are now believed to be fewer than 250 in the wild. This is the only place on earth you'll see them. They cling precariously to the last remaining patch of forest in the heart of vanilla country. Along the way, we're also lucky enough to see bamboo lemurs and white-headed lemurs. Internationally and locally, a lot of work is being done to try and secure the best future for Madagascar's people and its rare plants and animals. But it's hard to make people care when life is so tough and vanilla prices are riding so high. Sunday night in Vanilla City and the weekly beach party is in full swing. It's pouring rain, but nobody here is bothered. For the moment, they've got money in their pockets. But the vanilla price has soared and crashed before, and it will happen again. When supply inevitably catches up with demand, a lot of the people riding the boom will be in trouble. But that's tomorrow's problem. And for our tour guide, Yokno, with a field full of vanilla vines and dreams of a much bigger future, life is good. Yeah, because tour guide is not too bad, but vanilla is, is the best. No income better than vanilla in Madagascar and I think in the world. Yeah.